All right, so now let's look at the second uh, FRQ from the 2025 AP Physics 1 exam. So and again, this is a version J. This is the only version they'll release. The block of mass M is released from rest at position X equals zero. The ramp makes an angle theta with the horizontal. The block slides down the ramp with negligible friction at X equals 8D. The block makes contact with an uncompressed spring with spring constant K. The spring is compressed. The block momentarily comes to rest at 12D down here. So right down here, uh, at 12 D, the velocity is zero, uh, figure one shows the instance, the block is at zero 60 and 10 D respectively figure shows the energy bar chart represents the kinetic energy of the block, the gravitational potential energy of the block spring earth system. So remember when we're doing energy, this is definitely an energy problem. And the systems identified for you includes the earth includes the spring includes the block. That's the most complex system you handle in AP physics one, right? It's, it includes everything. And the spring potential energy of the block springer system is the instant the block is at 10 D when the gravitational potential energy of the block spring earth system is defined to be zero when the block momentarily comes to rest at 12 D. So right down here, all the energies are zero because the height is zero. So we're going to make H equals zero down here. And, uh, uh, well, let's see defined to be zero when it comes to rest. Oh, that, that's the gravitational potential energy. Yeah, okay, so that's H equals zero is what they're saying there. Draw the shaded bars that represent the kinetic energy, gravitational potential, spring potential, um, and for these spots here. Shaded bars, sorry, the dashed line represents zero energy, represent any H with the, the equal to zero with the distinct zero line on the zero energy line. Okay, relative facts. Okay, so cool, that's just about gra these energy bar diagrams here. So. Let's talk about what we, we're gonna, like overall, the total amount of energy ought to be the same. So you need to look at the total energy in the system and remember say like conservation of energy, is there no, is there any friction, negligible friction? So energy should be conserved. You say there's seven E zero, two E zero, that's nine E zero plus three E zero. So uh, 12 E zero is the total energy. So whatever I draw over here, the total's gotta remain 12 E zero, okay? So when we release it, so at x equals zero, we release it from rest. So there's no kinetic energy. The spring has not been compressed at all. Uh, so let me just confirm I get t equals zero. t equals zero is x equal, uh, oh, it's location is x equals zero. So it's released from rest. Yeah, released from rest. So there's no kinetic energy. There's no spring potential energy because the spring is not compressed at, any, at, at this point. So all of the energy, all of the 12, E zero has to be gravitational potential energy at this point, like that. Okay, 60. 60 is we're moving. We haven't made collision yet, right? So, because we make collision at 8D, so the spring is still zero. Now, the thing is that when we're at 6D versus 12D, we've traveled half the distance, so the height's half as much. So the gravitational potential energy ought to be half as high because we're now like at, at uh, half the distance vertically I know it's like half the distance down the ramp, but by similar triangles, we're at half the distance. Like this has got to be half of uh, where we where we were initially, right? Because then at, at 12D, we're at zero. So that means uh, there's no spring potential. The, the kinetic energy is still got to be 12, 6, because we got to have a total of, tw of 12 there. So we're going to have 6 and 6. That's 12. And let me just confirm 12 is correct. 7, 9, 9 plus 3, 12. Okay. So that looks like the energy bar diagrams. Okay, figure five shows the block at x equals zero when a block is released from rest and the block uh, when the momentarily comes to rest here. Starting with conservation of energy, derive an equation for the spring constant K. Express your answer in terms of M, theta, D, physical constants. Begin your derivation by running a f fundamental physics principle or equation from the reference sheet. Okay, cool. So, well, we're starting with conservation of energy. So we should think about the initial energy being the final energy, right? Because there's no external work happening on the system. We've included everything. There's no external forces doing any work. So the initial energy is going to be, well, we don't have any kinetic energy and we're just gonna have gravitational potential energy. That's what we did from our bar diagram, right? Cause spring's not compressed. This thing has a velocity of zero. So then the question is just as what is the height in terms of these variables? Cause H is not a variable that I'm allowed to use. So the height is, height is the distance from here to here. Well, we know what we know is this distance is 12 D, right? So along this path is 12 D. And we know that this angle is theta, so you can know the height from just our right triangle trigonometry. This is 12d sine theta. So then this is going to be uh, mass of the block g times 12d sine theta. Okay, so that's how much energy we start with. How much energy do we end with is we don't have any kinetic energy. 
we don't have any gravitational potential energy. We do have only spring potential energy. So it's 1 f kx squared. Now, how far have we compressed the spring? Well, the spring was initially at, uh, let's see, 8d? 8d, and it compressed all the way to 12d. So it, tr it compressed the distance 4d during that time, right? Because they're saying at 8d is when we make the when we when we collide with it. That's why they have the, these markings here. Okay, so it so the compression is 4d squared, right? That's how much we've compressed the spring. And so then we're just going to set those equal to each other. Mg, uh, I guess they use a capital M. Mg 12d sine theta equals one half k. Oh, let's let's square this. So it's one half k times 8d squared. So not eight. 4, 4 squared is 16. I was doing the times 1 half already. So this is 8kd squared. And you just then cancel one of the d's. We're going to divide by the 8. So we're going to have mg 12 over 8 sine theta. And then we also divide by d. Uh, and that's going to give you our k. So the k is going to be uh, divided by 4 on both. That's going to be 3 halves. mg sine theta divided by d. Okay, So that's the spring constant there. Okay, figure six shows a graph of the energy of the system as a function of position of the block from 8D to 12D. The spring potential energy of the block spring or system is shown on the graph. Sketch and label a liner curve that represents the total mechanical energy for the block spring or system as a function. So the total mechanical energy of the block spring or system means you're going to include all forms of energy, and it should be 12E0, and that's what we had on the bar. So this is going to be the total energy. That's the total mechanical energy. Sketch and label curve that represents the gravitational potential energy for the block as a function of position. At 8D, we have, um, let's see. Uh, at 8D, the distance you are is 4D along this part relative to H equals 0, so your distance of 4. So it's like, how much is that? Let's see. Uh, 4 is one-third of the whole distance. So you have one-third of 12. So it's actually going to be 4e0. Sorry about that. OK, so that is the potential energy there. OK, and then um, what they're asking you is to look at the graph. And so remember, the total of them have to add up to be the, be the 12e0. So at 8d, right, the kinetic energy plus the gravitational potential energy plus the spring potential energy needs to equal 12e0. And so this one here at 8d, right, this is 0. And then this is spring. Sorry, that's not 0. It's 4e0. And the spring is 0. So that means the kinetic energy is 8e0. Right? And at 9d, right, if you look at the kinetic energy plus the gravitational, put the spring potential is equal to 12e0. At this point, this is like 1e0 about, about 1e0. And then gravitational potential is about uh, 3e0. So then the kinetic energy is about equal to, well, this is less than 1e0, right? So then it's, it's like, this is about less than 3, or less than 4. So this is going to be greater than 8e0. Because you look at that y value, y value is a little bit lower. So the total there is going to actually be um, a little bit less than than 4e0. So that means it's going to have slightly more kinetic energy at that point, right? Because he's going to have more than 8e0. He's got more kinetic energy, so it's going to be moving faster. So v90 is greater. And so to be consistent with the energy line curves here, what we want to say is... Um, what we would, we would say is the total amount of energy, so the, the total energy remains 12e0. At x equals 8d, the kinetic energy, well, the spring, the total potential energy is equal to uh, 8e0, which implies the kinetic energy is equal to 4e0. Wait, no, I have that backwards. Sorry, I'm making, I'm thinking too fast in my head. OK, and then so at x equals 9d, the total potential energy uh, 
um, is less than 4e0, which implies the kinetic energy is greater than 8e0, and that implies it is moving faster. Okay, just like 